Ahoy, this is Zdenka. Everybody loves slow motion. And sometimes I even feel that it's tiny bit overdone, but still, it's super popular, especially here on YouTube in B-roll. Many entry-level cameras, such as Canon M50, shoot at 60 frames per second in 1080p with beautiful autofocus. But it is not the same when it comes to filming at 120 frames per second. The autofocus is not there, you gotta shoot manually, and the file size is only 720p. I do have step-up camera, which has all that beautiful autofocus and 120 frames per second in 1080p, and that is Canon M6 Mark II, but this video is not about that camera. Let's stick just with entry-level cameras, like this one, Canon M50. Let the magic begin. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Zden Karela. If you want to learn how to take better photos and videos with the latest gear and participate in creative camera challenges, stick around and consider subscribing. First of all, let's talk about frame rates and camera settings. I'm filming this video, such as my past videos, at 24 frames per second, as that gives me the most natural look. It's actually pretty close to what your eye is seeing. This camera also films at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. I was filming my past B-roll, such as this baseball one, at 60 frames per second. The results were quite good. I actually was able to film handheld, no problem, but I would have more creative freedom if I was filming at 120 frames per second. The 720p and lack of autofocus that's what's turned me off from filming at 120 frames per second. Now, I think it's more of a size issue, the 720p. I don't actually mind filming in manual focus mode. Sometimes I purposely film that way. If I filmed at 120 frames per second, I would end up with these beautiful slow motion shots mixed with some speed ramping because you can slow down the 120 frames per second so much more. When you film at 60 frames per second and post it on the 24 frames per second timeline, you can slow it down to 40%. But if you film at 120 frames per second and post it on 24 frames per second timeline, you can slow it down all the way to 20%. And for those interested, I actually created a very detailed video on frame rates. I'm gonna post the link in the video description below so you can watch it after this video. When you film at 60 frames per second, your shutter speed has to double. So your shutter speed is 1 120th of a second. Depending on a camera model such as Canon M50, you might have to set 1 125th of a second, whichever is closer. So let's go back to baseball field where I was filming in 60 frames per second and let me grab a few clips and convert them to 120 frames per second in Adobe Premiere Pro. But first, I have a few tips for you when you're gonna be filming in 60 frames per second knowing that you will be converting it later on to 120. When you film in 60 frames per second, you can use gimbal. I like to use Moza Aircross 2. Or you can film handheld. You just want to make sure you don't rush. Hold your camera with both hands and use your whole body for smooth movement, slow and steady. Normally, if you wouldn't change your files to 120 frames per second, you would have to move really slow to make sure you don't introduce shake in your handheld footage. But again, when you know that you will change it to 120 frames per second, you don't have to be that slow. Any shake will be kind of hidden. But now let's grab some clips and import them to Adobe Premiere Pro. First, let me just import a regular 60 frames per second clip to Adobe Premiere Pro and slow it down to 40%. This is the slow motion you normally get when you film at 60 frames per second. Let's try to slow down the same clip to 20% to reach the 120 frames per second slow motion. Obviously the footage is choppy because there is not enough frames to fill it up. There is only 60 frames in that second, not 120. Let me show you frame by frame. There is no movement in every second frame. And let's just change that. Right click this particular clip, go to speed duration. At the bottom of the window, you will see time interpolation, which you can change to optical flow. 
what it will do, it will create those missing frames. So when you play it now, look, done. Here is your 120 frames per second. And that was just built-in option in Adobe Premiere Pro. And if actually you don't even use Adobe Premiere Pro, you can get a plugin, it's called Twixter, and it does work with Adobe Premiere Pro, but also other video editors. So it's definitely worth checking out. I have added the link in the video description below for you. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked today's video and subscribe to more. If you have any questions, comments, or simply want to say hi, you know I read it all and I always respond. You can post it in a comment section below. And I will see all of you, my friends, in the next video. Ciao, ahoy!